And now on to the dinosaur of the day, Chasmosaurus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon, so thanks Cole. Chasmosaurus was a ceratopsid that lived in the Cretaceous in North America. The name means opening lizard, and it's named that because of the large openings in its frill. It was found in the Dinosaur Park formation of the Dinosaur Provincial Park of Alberta, Canada. There's two species of Chasmosaurus, Chasmosaurus russelli and Chasmosaurus belli, and Chasmosaurus belli is the type species. Chasmosaurus russelli is in the older lower dinosaur park formation, and Chasmosaurus belli is in the middle dinosaur park formation. Lawrence Morris Lamb found the first Chasmosaurus bones in 1897. He found the holotype, which was part of a neck frill. He thought it could be a new species, but categorized it as an already known genus, Monoclonius, and he called it Monoclonius belli. The species named belli is in honor of collector Walter Bell. Then in 1913, Charles Sternberg and his sons found a few complete Monoclonius belli skulls in Alberta, plus a largely complete skeleton with skin impressions. Ooh. And in 1914, Lamb named them Protorosaurus, as an ancestor to Torosaurus. But that name was already being used for a Permian reptile found in Germany that was described in 1836 by Meyer. So Lamb renamed that Chasmosaurus in February of 1914. Man, it must have been hard before the internet where... <laughs> Well, there's, there's a lot of these stories of... The, yeah, because you couldn't just go to a magical box and type in the word you were thinking of using and see if anybody else has used it yet. Dig through a hundred books and hope to find it if it exists. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of skulls and fossils that have been referred to Chasmosaurus and many species named, though there's only two that are still considered valid. Barnum Brown named Chasmosaurus... Kaisenai in 1933 based on a skull that had long brow horns which actually may just be related to Chasmosaurus canadensis, which was named in 1990 by Thomas Lemon. Chasmosaurus canadensis was originally Monoclonius canadensis. Lamb had found it in 1902 and described it as Eoceratops canadensis in 1915. And this Eoceratops and Chasmosaurus caeseni were thought to be Mojoceratops, named by Nicholas Longridge. But some scientists think that Mojoceratops is a synonym of Chasmosaurus russeli, and in 2016, Campbell and others found that Eoceratops and Chasmosaurus caeseni were both just Chasmosaurus. In 1933, Richard Swan Lull named a specimen Chasmosaurus breviostris. It had a short snout, but it's now seen to be a junior synonym of Chasmosaurus belli. And then Charles Sternberg named Chasmosaurus russeli in 1940. That's the second valid species. And that species name is in honor of Loris Shano Russell. In 1987, Gregory Paul renamed Pentaceratops sternbergii into Chasmosaurus, but no one's really accepted that. In 1989, Thomas Lemon described Chasmosaurus mariscalensis, which was found in Texas, but that has since been renamed to Aguhaceratops. In 2000, George Olszewski renamed Monoclonius recurvicornis, it was originally named in 1889, to Chasmosaurus recurvicornis, but now that's a nomum duvium. In 2001, Chasmosaurus ervinensis was named, but that's since been renamed to Vagaceratops, that was renamed in 2010. That's so many namings. Yes. You lost me after like the third one. <laughs> well, that's just a history of how many species there were, but all you need to know is that there are two valid ones. Chasmosaurus belli, which is the type species, and Chasmosaurus russeli. Thank you. The so Chasmosaurus was about 14 to 16 feet, or 4.3 to 4.8 meters long, and weighed one and a half to two tons. The skin impressions that Charles Sternberg had found had large scales in horizontal rows that were among smaller scales that were hexagonal or pentagonal. It was unclear what color they were. Chasmosaurus had three horns, one on the nose and two on the brow. The horns were short, though Chasmosaurus russeli had longer horns that were more curved backwards than Chasmosaurus belli. But Chasmosaurus belli had a V-shaped frill at the back. Chasmosaurus russeli is more of a shallow U-shape. The sides of the frill had osteoderms. It's not clear what Chasmosaurus used its horns and frill for, since the horns were short and the frill had such large openings, so that wouldn't have been great for defense, and maybe they used their beaks for defense instead. The frill may have been meant to look more vicious or used for thermal regulation or to attract mates. They may have been brightly colored. There was skin that covered the large openings, so it would have looked like a solid frill, and because there's soft tissue in the frill, it's possible Chasmosaurus could have flushed and made its frill look more vivid. 
It had a longer snout and jaws than other ceratopsians that lived around, so it may have been a pickier eater. And it may have taken care of its young. Phil Curry and a team found a juvenile Chasmosaurus belli in Alberta. They thought it to be three years old, and it had similar limb and frill proportions to an adult, so it probably wasn't that fast and didn't need to keep up with adults, which is why it's possible they, they took care of their young. Interesting. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that the SVP 2017 logo is based on that specific juvenile Chasmosaurus. Because it was cool. discovered in Alberta <laughs> near where the convention's going to be. There's a lot of dinosaurs discovered in Alberta. There are. But that one's pretty cute because it's a little baby ceratopsian. Yeah. Maybe they'll make it look really colorful. Yeah. I've only seen it in black and white so far. Oh, okay. <laughs> That'd be cool though. And then of course, chasmosaurines are one of the two main groups of ceratopsians. 